Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Statistics by UNESCO has shown that women in the tech industry constitute only 28% in the sector and just about 30% in sub-Saharan Africa. Now a Nigerian called Anu Gopaud, founder of Africa Agility Foundation, is working hard to close that gap. And we've invited her to our studio this morning to tell us all about her work. Good morning, Anu. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you Thanks for being here. Us. So let's talk first of all about the statistics regarding women and tech in Nigeria, Africa, and globally. What exactly is it, right? And uh, does this come to you as something that we should have, you know, surpassed many years ago? Oh yes, that's absolutely correct. When we are, when we look at the statistics of African American and African women in technology, is three percent, which is really really low. And what's the percentage of African women? Is it's less than one percent. So this is a big issue, not just in Africa, but all over the world. And there are so many organizations in the Western world, you know, doing amazing work to make this happen. So I live in the United States and I've done so much equipping, you know, um, Western women with D2 skills. And I just feel that this is the time to come back to my country and come back to my continent and empower especially our youths, because the most talented people in the world are the African youths. Why do you think the, the statistics are so low for Nigerian um, mostly? I believe it's opportunity, right? I studied computer science at University of Ibadan. For five years, I did not even see computer. And they were teaching us, you know, all the old technology skills like Pascal, Fortran. And that was the tipping point for me. You know, having gone abroad to study and to live, I believe that African women, even youth men, should be provided the opportunities needed. We are talented. It's just the opportunity that is missing. And funding. And funding, Tell yeah. Tell me more about that, that, the funding. I mean, it seems that an institution as great as the University of Ibadan, I mean, did not have, you know, that, those resources to enable computer science students to learn the practicals of what, they're, of, yeah. of what they're learning theoretically. So tell us about the need for funding in Nigeria's education space, especially from primary school upward. Well, um, we need to revolutionize our educational system. It's really, really horrible. And this is not just for governments. This is for corporate organizations to do so much more in order to be able to develop the children. Like in August, Africa Agility had STEM for Kids. My six years old knows how to build up wow. in the United States. And I just said, you know what? We need to do exactly the same thing for the African kids. So we did STEM for kids. And we trained children between the, between the age of 10 to, 10 to 15. And you can't believe after two weeks, children with no technical skills were able to build creative app. And age 13 to 15, build robots wow. using artificial intelligence. So, so many amazing things can happen. You know, we are not looking for, NGOs are not looking for, you know, for hundreds of millions or thousands of dollars, right? Any amount is good enough to train at least one child. Okay, now, now let's talk about the benefits, you know, the things that they stand to gain, you know, if they get, to, you know, with, in with your programs, the Africa Agility Foundation. Um, what do young female Nigerians stand to gain? You know, what programs can they learn? Um, what uh, software are they going to be open to, you know, learning how to use? Oh, so many, so many, so many benefits. The skills that they are learning are the cutting edge skills in the world, highly sought out for artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, UI, UX, web development, including agile, the number one innovation method in Silicon Valley. That's the secret sauce of Facebook, Microsoft, Toyota, all these companies. And it's not just, you know, training them and giving them the practical experience needed. We also have a three-month transformational program called the, the, the Lean Approach, where we pair these girls up with, with mentors from all over the world that will help them to improve those skills. And they are working on real projects that they can launch at any time if they are so passionate about it. And after the three months program, we are placing them in 
you know, different opportunities in Nigeria. Um, you know, some of them are actually entrepreneurial. We have one of our girls that actually built the website, the agriculture website for Ogun State government. We also have some of our girls that are freelancing for companies all over the world. So not just training them, but helping them to increase their earning power by finding the opportunities, the job for them. So, so just talking about that, tell me about the job opportunities that women and even men um, who participate in the, the, the training by Agility Africa Foundation, you know, can benefit. What are the job opportunities that they can have? What's, what are the advance, what are the opportunities for career advancement? When they go ahead and build these apps, how can it transform society? What is the long-term benefit? Oh, so they are actually building social economic, you know, um, apps or websites or data solutions that can solve African problems not just African, the world problems. Like in June, we have the Lagos State government, uh, governor that graced our occasion. And the girls that were at the June cohort, they actually built the top three Lagos challenges, wicked problems, traffic, waste management, and health. Even the governor said, wow, in the last two years, you know, my administration, we've been talking about it. But he could not believe that in two days, Akaton, Girls that worked into the boot camp with no experience in technology could actually help him to solve the problems. The opportunities are there. But it's so unfortunate that, you know, getting funding, getting companies that want to partner for internships and job placements in Nigeria, it's really, 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 really hard. Mm. Tell me more about those apps, especially the one on traffic. What exactly do they do and how do they help the state? So, for an example in Lagos, if there was an accident, we have to wait for LASMA, right, to come. But the digital solutions that the girls actually built is any legal citizens can actually take pictures, images of the accidents and everything that happened and send it to LASMA. They can actually see it on their digital platform without them actually coming to, to the accident scene. Also, they built, um, they integrated a forum that is like Twitter on it. And with that, you know, there's opportunity for car sharing. Oh, I, I live in Songota, for an example, and I work on the mainland. I work at UB. I'm just using UB as an example. Then I can do, and I'm not sure of how many people actually live in Songota, but we work in the same building. So that Twitter kind of um, forum that was built could actually help to connect people that work in the same place together or in the same company together and they can do cash sharing. Then also, instead of waiting for, you know, maybe news feed from, um, from, from TV stations, you know, citizens can actually reach out to everybody to say, you know what, don't pass this route because there's traffic, there's an accident, and also provide you alternative routes that can take you to where you need to go. Okay, and um, I, I also want to talk about, you know, how this, you know, changes the narrative um, of the stereotypical um, occupations for girls normally, you know, um, when most girls, you know, in, in that age, primary, secondary school already push towards fashion and, and cooking and, you know, mm -hmm. home being housewives and some of all of that. Um, so how does this change that narrative? It changed the narratives a lot because our kids can actually become inventors. What's stopping them, right? Most of them are being influenced by the society, by friends, even by families and uncles, right? This change in narratives, if these kids and if these youths can see alternative route that can help them to make the money and become who they want to become a better version of, the best version of themselves. It's changed the narratives. And COVID-19 has already proven to the world that you don't need to go to a physical world, you know, to be able to work, or you don't need to, everybody can work from home. So there's opportunity to actually get jobs from any part of Africa. And there's opportunity for kids to actually become tech premium. So you're saying that Parents need to open their minds to the possibilities that, you know, their ch children could get. Also, the kids do not even need to have any knowledge whatsoever, any background information about tech. No. Just get enrolled and then they're on their way. Just get enrolled. Mm. 
because technology has changed the world. This, this, we are in the era of technology and it's not changing. We live by it, we breathe by it. Everything we do is all about technology. So, you know, helping African youths, African children to learn this technology, you know, especially these cutting edge skills right now could propel them into the world. You know, there's nothing stopping us from inventing something, disrupting the world with digital solutions. And people can see that, you know, the best talents in the world, the best innovation in the world comes from Africa. And that's my dream. Okay. Interesting. Um, tell us about what, um, you know, your foundation is uh, planning um, for the rest of 2021. Are there programs uh, coming up? So um, we are almost about to go into partnership with Cisco. And That's there big. are opportunities to learn cybersecurity, networking, and, you know, all these other hardware skills. So we are so excited about that. And by the time the partnership is being, you know, sealed up, then we can start having virtual classes for not just for children, but also for youths, both male and female. And that could actually help them to upskill as well. So that's our focus for this year. And our girls have graduated as well. They are still part of the community. We are supporting them. Some of them, those of them that are working, we are still providing mentorship for them. You know, one him, two a him. They call the tutors, they call their mentors and ask for support. So that's the going on. And those that just graduated yesterday, they are going to go into the mentorship immersion program starting from next week, Monday. So there's a lot, a lot that will be going on in the background. But the next boot camp is going to start in 2022 because the year is almost coming to an end and December is almost there. So for people who feel this must really cost an arm and a leg, is this true that, you know, to get into tech space, you need to spend a lot to acquire the knowledge? No. Everything we are doing is free. Free? Oh, it's free. They pay nothing. Because we are focusing on the less privileged young women in the society, those that cannot afford it. Those that cannot even afford transportation that we need to support. Those that cannot even afford to have a laptop that we need to provide a laptop for, for. So the only thing needed is just for them to find their way into the training center at Ikui and also at Siruleri. We also provide lunch for them and good food. Okay, That's all right. Amazing. I'm guessing they can search for you know more information online, or do they, how do they reach out to you? Oh yes, they, uh, people can reach out to us, you know, by contacting team at africaagility.org, and also they can go to our website www.africaagility.org. So there's so much information on it. So is it just for kids? If there are people who are adults who are interested in learning, are they welcome? Our focus is on the children and the youths. Okay. Because they are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. <laughs> Anu Gopal, thank you so much thank for you so the much work for that you do me. and for sharing you know, your time with us this morning. Thank you thank so much. Oh, happy Independence Day <laughs> to you too. All right, and uh, this is where, of course, we'll wrap up the program this morning. It has been a very interesting uh, conversation, talk about Nigeria's 61st Independence and also, you know, the first edition for the new month. Of October. October. Interesting. Uh, so we wish you a very beautiful weekend ahead, public holidays, and uh, see you back here again on Monday morning. Bye-bye.